Hello, everyone. Welcome to Intentioning This, a conversation with the most interesting people to help you reach your highest intentions. I just realized I forgot to put my red jacket on. How about that? <laughs> this is one of those kind of days. I'm trying, you know what? I'm, I'm going to put my jacket on because, you know, everybody's used to seeing me in red. And when I don't have red on, they think I'm sick and I'm feeling perfectly fine. So I'm going to put my jacket on. There we go. Okay. All right. Now I'm, now I'm dressed. Now I'm ready. Okay. Uh, so I am Gloria Felt. Not always got myself all together, but, you know, I'm, that's my name, Gloria Felt. I am co-founder and president of Take the Lead. And our mission is nothing less than gender parity in leadership and intersectionally uh, by 2025 in every single sector of the economy. Big, bold goal made more challenging since the pandemic. We'll talk a little bit about that. And I am thrilled today to welcome Dr. Nancy O'Reilly. And I, there couldn't have been a more perfect, perfect, perfect guest for today. I, I, I want to just tell you a little bit about Nancy, and uh, th there's no way I could sing all of the accolades I would like to sing for her. But I want to say that every chapter in my book, Intentioning, relates to one of the leadership intentioning tools. And in this case, Nancy is the epitome of the woman who believes in the infinite pie because she is the person who tells us how to lift each other up as women, how we can all support each other, um, how there is no limit to what we can do if we work together. Nancy also does that in her, you know, every day in her life as the leader of uh, philanthropic um, initiatives. Nancy is the immediate past board chair of Take the Lead and current board member and her Women Connect for Good Foundation is always out front helping women to lift each other up, to uh, be equal people in this world and all kinds of other civic involvement. And of course, she's also in a major equestrian and has the, uh, am I going to get this name right? Southwest Equestrian? No, I got it wrong. What? Tell me, say it right. Southern California Equestrian Center. Southern California Equestrian Center. Thank you very much, Nancy. <laughs> I can say that it is one of the most gorgeous properties I've ever seen, and it is getting more beautiful all the time. So uh, you're going to want to keep track of that and probably have an event there sometime. So Nancy is, uh, I'm going to say this right either, Psy D. Am I saying that right? Correct. Um, Yes, so so that you know what her expertise is to talk today, because this is Mental Health Month. May is Mental Health Month, and I already knew that I wanted to have her on this LinkedIn Live today, but I didn't know that right just before we would have this conversation, we would have something to talk about that wasn't on the agenda, but I'm going to ask Nancy to speak to this, yeah. and that is that we've just seen a probable, at least a leaked leaked version of a probable United States Supreme Court ruling that would outlaw abortion and uh, make actually overturn Roe v. Wade and ostensibly return it to the states, 20 of which already are in the process of or have already outlawed for all intents and purposes, a woman's right to have that reproductive choice. And the thing that many people don't know is that that decision was based on the right to contraception, that that decision was based on the right to privacy, which also underlines all of the, the uh, gay rights um, uh, uh, and decisions that have been made in the last two decades. And I, pardon me, but I had to leave the phone on because we're waiting for a call from the airline. So my apologies for that. So here's here here is I just felt like we would be remiss if we didn't start with that, Nancy. So can you just speak to the yeah. mental health consequences of women not feeling like they can control their destiny? Well, <clears throat> there's an article out right now called The UN Calls reproductive rights, the foundation of equality for women and girls. And, you know, that's exactly what this is about. If we don't have rights as far as our reproductive health and choices, it's going to keep us all pregnant, barefoot and at home. You know, this was this has been the why every election we go through this over and over again. And these states that are that are these abortion, these abortion laws are getting more and more ridiculous. You know, uh, when I was in when I was at the university, 
the only way you could get any form of birth control was to lie and tell them <laughs> that you were a Mrs. something. And everyone in that dorm had had Mrs. whatever their name was for mm -hmm. pills. And, and so we have been fighting for so many years. And I can't imagine the girls that are coming up through the ranks, my, my daughters, their daughters, coming up through the ranks that will not have those choices. And it, it is absolutely beyond me. But that is truly, I believe it goes back to the issue as the found, reproductive rights are the foundation for e equality and for, for, for women and girls. And I think that's really, this is really where this is coming from. It's, a, it's a, an agenda that's really to keep women down. I can't agree with you more, Nancy. And I will tell you that I did a, a, a television interview a couple of days ago, right after that uh, leaked ruling came out. And I realized that I had to tell the interviewer the backstory of where barefoot and pregnant came from, where that phrase actually came from. Mm -hmm. And it was from the 1950s. And it was like one of those things that you never thought you would have. I never thought I would have to tell that story again. Uh, it was a it was a member of the state legislature in Arkansas who told his Rotary Club that they didn't they didn't have to worry about uppity women in Arkansas, because if one of their women got too uppity, they would just give her another cow to milk and keep her barefoot and pregnant. And 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 it and it got a big laugh. Yeah. It got a huge laugh at the Rotary Club at the time. Yeah. And so you think that things have changed, but not so much. I mean, there still is a there, there. You know, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And so we are, in a sense, repeating many things. Although many things have changed. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I the one thing I do want to say is that the best thing for me when I am in a mental health funk, because I have been getting so many calls and, and texts and questions from people, for me, the best thing to do is to take action. And the best action we can take is to make sure we're registered to vote. We know where we're supposed to vote and we start supporting the candidates that, that we know will support women's equality. Yeah. So that's, yeah. I, I, I don't, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as a, as a person sure. who is well, an expert in the field. Awareness is key. I mean, people need to know that, you know, women, we buy 85 to 90% of products and services. We really are basically, we could run the country. And to think that we're now facing this possibility, and there's so many states already that abortions are outlawed. Women are going to be crossing the borders. They've even talked about states that are basically going to to arrest women that leave one state to go to another for abortion. What it's going to cause is, again, those back back those doctors in the back rooms or women aborting themselves, it's not, it, we're gonna go back to the dark ages, absolutely back to the dark ages. So you're right, we have, to have, we have to use our voice, we have to use our influence, and we have to be able to vote and, and say, no, no, this is not, I mean, like I said, I think, <laughs> yeah, I right. really right. cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. Yeah. Well, and, and I think the good news is that we do have more voice. We do have bigger voices. We do have more uh, positions of power and leadership than we did 50 years ago when Roe v. Wade was decided. So we need to use those. We just yes. need to use those. Yeah. So I want to I want to shift a little bit here to, uh, even though I think all these things are certainly connected, but these are turbulent times right now. We have had two and a half years of a pandemic where women have experienced so many setbacks in many ways. Um, so many people are rethinking their lives, their work, their family situation. H how can women, and how can women, first of all, let's talk about how can women take care of themselves during these turbulent times? Let's yeah. take that question first. Well, well, for me, and I think for many people, uh, COVID, COVID has given us a choice. It has given us an opportunity to look at the yin and yang. And for, for me, it's really been about relationships. I don't know about you, Gloria, but who we, we become the people we surround ourselves with. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're looking around and you're surrounding, with, surrounding yourself with people who support you, who care about you, who lift you up as they rise, then things are completely different. But if you're surrounding yourself with naysayers, people that are toxic, 
uh, people that do not have good intentions when it comes to you. Mm -hmm. But you, the, the key is taking care of yourself. And this is something women are not very good at. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. In fact, I was having a conversation with a woman this morning I, and she started talking about this, this ongoing back issue she has. I said, what do you do for that? Do you know, she says, well, I go to a chiropractor. I said, do you, do you know about diaphragmatic breathing? Do you do any kind of uh, relaxation or, or methods of calming yourself? Mm -hmm. She says, well, no, not really. I'm really kind of a hyper person. So part of it really is learning the most important thing. We are not good for anything or anybody unless we take care of ourselves. And one of the ways we can do that is for is by asking for help. Mm. When was the last time you, you, you know, I, I've, I've got rid of my Superwoman T-shirt. You know, I, I threw it out the window and I went, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to get in. Nobody gets anywhere in this world alone. We get there with people that were, you know, and for women, we're standing on the shoulders of so many women that helped us to be who we are today. So we, we need to keep reaching out, supporting, but also asking for help and then turning around and giving help as well. Well, thank you for those, because those are really specific tips, much appreciated. And I am nodding my head because I am the first person who needs to hear that, uh, particularly about taking care of myself first. I, I found myself just yesterday, one more time, putting other things in front of what I had planned to do for myself. And it took literally hours for me to realize I had done that, that, you know, that's a pattern that I had and that I needed to assert, no, actually, that's not the way we're going to do this. This is, you know, this is, this is what the intention was. And we're going to go back to the original intention. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I want to, I want to ask you now that same question as it relates to women who are leaders and how can they help? Cause you mentioned support other people how can women who are leaders, what are like two or three things that we can yeah. do to help well, others? Well, you know, developing good lifestyle, good habits. You know, like one of the things that I do when I wake up, uh, I meditate. Mm -hmm. I begin my day already, at, well, your book, Intentioning. I'm already starting to create the day I want to create. I've been doing these videos and I wake up and I think about, well, what's important? But again, your mindset, what goes on between your ears is the most important thing, is the way you want to intention your day and you set up a day for success, a day for you. But again, starting with meditation, calming, you know, exercise. A lot of people, oh, God, not exercise. But the, the one thing about exercise that's good, not only does it get your heart pumping, but it's something that you can start and you can finish. How many things in our life can we start and we finish? And especially good leaders, we need they need to practice that as well. That, you know, intention your day, meditate, already set up the day that you want. But again, you're always creating between your ears the day that you want and the way you want to be in that day. How do we how do we translate that then to the people we're working with? I mean, what, what are things that a leader can do to to help other people short of saying, okay, you're going to exercise with me at seven o'clock this morning. Well, again, role modeling and being a mentor is what it is about, you know, uh, and I, and I think that's part of it is that, uh, you know, what, uh, what works for you? I mean, again, if your company, your corporation has a, has a, a certain uh, element and, uh, you know, the companies that are truly becoming more and more successful are those that have authentic leaders. Mm -hmm. These are leaders that are transparent, but they're authentic and people get that. But it's about developing healthy relationships within the corporation itself. And it starts with the it starts with the leader. And again, but it goes back to creating that team, being a mentor, finding a mentor. But it's uh, about really supporting one another. And, and I, you know that when you're working with someone, uh, you know, oftentimes if I if I need something done, I, you know, I'll tell people, I'll, say, I'll jump right in there and help as mm -hmm. much as I can. So it's, it's really, you know, you lift as your eyes, but you're always supporting one another. You know, I, I did a, a program yesterday for the Kobe Club on uh, the opportunities to make the workplace better for women that the pandemic has brought. And the analogy that I used was that organizations are like amoebas. They have to they have to evolve as the environment evolves. And then the environment today with women not wanting to go back into the workforce as it has existed in the past, it seems to me that that 
companies are going to have to do the very things that we have been saying for years would be more helpful to families, such as family leave, paid family leave for both men and women when they yeah, need to be caregivers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or, I mean, as one example of uh, figuring out how to have a child care system that actually enables both men and women to uh, to be at work without worrying all day about their children or without having to work at home with children uh, that that are taking uh, a lot of your mental bandwidth at the same time and not perhaps getting 100 percent of what they need either. So I, I'm curious as to whether you agree with that assessment and what you see as being the opportunities that we might jump on right now because of the disruption of the pandemic. Well, I mean, and you're exactly right. Uh, you know, I, I, I actually kind of like Zoom meetings because it does, you know, if, if we really begin to respect people's time, their energy and their, their relationships in their families, uh, you know, again, that's been a big key. Uh, we're getting women back to work, but it has to be a workplace that, that also helps them with their lifestyle, care of children, uh, you know, uh, again, flex time, maybe not coming into the office every day. I think companies have to really be very, very creative as to how they're going to get the people in that, in that company. Uh, the ownership, by the way, ownership is key. You know, everybody owns the company and everybody is working mm -hmm. towards the same common goal mm -hmm. to to make it a better workplace. So, no, I absolutely mm -hmm. agree. Companies have to be very, very creative. Uh, there are many, many companies that are looking for people right now, but they're going to have to recruit in a way that really is uh, going to be beneficial to the individual and their family and the, the person themselves. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the attributes that leaders can cultivate in themselves and in others, maybe setting the culture of the company or the organization or their household, whatever it might be, to activate that principle that there isn't an there isn't a finite pie, that the, yeah. you know to believe in the infinite pie and and understand that resources aren't scarce and that we can all benefit by by helping each other, um, yeah. enlarging the pie. Yeah. How how can how can leaders model well, that? But, but again, more of the team approach, which is, again, we work together. It's um, we, we get more accomplished. And you know what? It's a lot more fun when we all work together. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always said we could put five women in a room and we could set up uh, the, the goal, the objective and plan it and have it done. Because when we put people together, women, especially in a room and we have a goal, we can get it done. And you know what? It's a lot more fun when we do that as well. Oh, isn't that the truth? So how did you learn that? How did you how did you get to be this person that you are doing what you're doing? Tell us about your path to it. Well, you know, I'm I'm a psychologist, but uh, one of the things that always interested me was behavior, people and their behavior. And uh, of course, uh, I started out very as a young mother. I had my children very, very early, three girls, never expected that to happen. So uh, again, I've, it's always been about leaving a legacy for my daughters mm -hmm. and also understanding myself as a woman. And so for me, uh, you know, I, I've, we, you and I both know we've been through the trials and tribulations with women, but when you find your tribe, when you find the group of women, such as the women that take the lead or the Sheila Robinson, the different women that are out there that mm -hmm. truly have a common goal, which is to make this a better world. And to do so, we all work together and it's that gender equity and that gender equality that truly makes it happen. You know, and, 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 and that, that global reach that we're getting bigger and bigger. And there, there's, I mean, you know, I, I would like to say that there are many, many more people that are concerned about others as there, as there are not. So I, I think we all know that change is, uh, positive change is necessary, but we all need to come together. As, I, as in my book, we're all in this together. It's going to take us all to move forward in that respect. Well, we'll talk about your book and talk about your Lift Women Up program. What, what, what's in that and where can people find it? Okay. Well, the, the, well there are several books, but the, the, la the last book is called In This Together. It's now an audio book. We're very excited about that. Uh, you can go to DrNancyO'Reilly.com and everything is there. The Lift Women Up campaign, and I know Take the Lead is very much a part of that campaign, is really very, very simple. It's 52 weeks of things that women can do to support one another. 
And sometimes it may be just as simple as giving a woman a call and saying, hey, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, during the pandemic, wasn't it wonderful to get notes from people, to actually talk to people on the phone? You know, we, <laughs> we started to develop those relationships that we, I, I don't know about you, I, I contacted people that I had talked to forever. But but it's, it's really about just, again, uh, connecting and lift women up as you rise, lift as you rise. Is, is been, has been extremely successful and it's not hard to do and we can do it each and every day, just something very simple. I don't know about you, but I've walked into a, a, a store or a restaurant and there's a woman working there and I go, hey, how are you doing? You know, thanks for what you do. You know, it's so easy for us to lift another woman. Go, you know, you're doing a great job here. Yeah, have you ever seen the, the smile and the big, they puff up, but just simple words of support. But Lift Women Up, the Lift Women Up campaign is just that. Very simple, but something you can do every single day to lift another woman up. And where can people find it? Dr. Nancy O'Reilly.com. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and we have wonderful podcasts talking about all this. And, and Gloria, you're on those podcasts and, as That's well. That's true. And of course, yeah. very much a part of in, in this together. I mean, again, you and I are an example of, of what we have done and what, what, what women can do when we work together and we have a common goal, which is really 2025 seems like it's just around the corner now, but uh, you know, I, I, I just, <laughs> we can't give up. We can't give up. We have to keep using our voices and, and gathering those gathering together. And uh, you know, the big push now for women can connect for good is the global reach. Mm -hmm. To get mm -hmm. to have women all around the world, especially through Ukraine, places that are really struggling, especially women in those countries that are really struggling, that we can show them that we can support them, mm -hmm. we can help them, because when we help another woman, we help ourselves as well. Well, I can only imagine what some of those women are are dealing with right now. I mean, I probably can't even imagine what what they're dealing with and what the long term traumatic impact of, of, of it is going to be on the women and the children and the men. It's, you know, it's even not going to be over when, when the war is over, no. but everybody in their daily lives experiences some kind of setback, some kind of trauma, some kind of um, problem that they're dealing with. And from a mental health perspective, what are some of the, what are some of the things that we can practice? What are some of the practices we can have? that can help us to cope with the inevitable, the yeah. inevitable setbacks we'll have. I mean, everybody's going to experience them. We're all going to lose loved ones. We're all going to, we're all going to have all kinds of, uh, of issues that will happen to us. What, you know, what, what advice do you have? Well, uh, again, daily practices for me, it's meditation. For mm -hmm. me, it's exercise. For me, it's diet. Uh, you know, but, but we have to be cognizant of what we're doing to our bodies and to our minds. I, I use the term stinking thinking. And, uh, you know, I know it's funny, but, but the woulda, coulda, shoulda. It's all the things that people, in fact, if, if people would stop and think about the things that they're saying to themselves, they're they would find out oftentimes they're not being very nice to themselves. So we have to have to just think about you know, again, what's between the ears, our thinking, how are we taking care of ourselves? You know, did we eat properly? Did we get, and sleeping, you know, sleeping is very important. I found out this at one of the conferences I just recently attended is that the brain needs about six hours of sleep, but the brain actually cleanses, cleanses itself over the night. So if you wake up groggy and not feeling well, oftentimes that means you're not mm -hmm. getting enough sleep. So it's really going back to the basics. And you know, when we, when we take care of ourselves, we feel better and, and we're, we're, just a, we're just, we're a lot easier to be around. I don't know about you, but uh, when, I, when I feel healthy and I've taken care of myself, I'm, much, I'm, I'm a lot more fun to be around. Oh, oh absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I, there's one other thing I wanna add to your list of things to do that you model. And it is part of the believing in the infinite pie. And that is helping other people, philanthropy. Yeah. And you have, you, you didn't have to create a foundation. No. You didn't have to do that. You could be eating bonbons in, you know, in, in <laughs> Italy somewhere. You could 
you could be doing stuff like that, but you didn't. You've chosen to help other people with the resources that you have. Talk about that. I mean, we can't all start a foundation. We can't well, all do that. But, but, but what can, can we do that that will help us in, from the perspective of yeah. of uh, philanthropy in our there, own lives that are, may help other people? There are so many things that we can do. You know, philanthropy uh, is so it's so simple. It's just helping another person. And for me, you know, I, because of my background, where I came from, uh, that was very much a part of my family as far as helping those that need help. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just part of my part of my cultural background, background. But again, you know, you can do such simple things. You know, uh, I think people really, really want to help, but they just don't know how. But it, it can go back to what you're interested in. If it's in animals, you know, volunteer. You know, there are so many places that, you know, volunteers basically in many, many states and communities help run organizations. So volunteering your time, uh, but things that you're truly interested in, if it's children or it's your community or it's, you know, green trees, but we can all do something to make the world a better place. Everybody can do it. And it doesn't, doesn't have to cost a lot of money and it doesn't have to take a lot of time but I can guarantee you, though, when you reach out and you help something or someone else, you feel better. You feel better about yourself. Truly, truly. I, I've been following, as I'm sure many people who are watching are following the uh, World World Kitchen and how they're feeding people all over all over the world. But I mean, you, you, the massive amounts of of, of work that they're doing in Ukraine, for example, right now yeah. in South Africa and several other places simultaneously. Again, it's, it's a good example of someone who didn't have to do that, had a very successful restaurant, but chose to, yeah. to, to give that to the world. And we may not all be able to do something at that level, but everybody can do something. Nobody has to do everything. No, no. And we shouldn't beat ourselves up if we can't do everything. No, we, but but, yeah. but we we do we see that just helping someone with the very basic things can change the world in so many ways. But we have we have to we, we can't put our heads under the, no we can't stick our heads in the sand. We have to yeah. be aware. We want to know what's going on out out there. But every day you can do something to help another person. It's very very simple, and it shouldn't cost you a lot of money or a lot of time. I want to give a shout out to the videos that you do every day that you post every day that give Thank people either the lift women up tip of the day or some other way that they can uh, be be healthy and happy and, and productive in life. And uh, I, I don't know how you do it every single day, but I, you know, I, I, I follow you. I follow you. I try, to do what you I try to do what you tell me to do, Nancy. I, know. I didn't do one today. Well, you know, uh, I'll be I'll, I'll be completely honest with you, Gloria. Usually, I'm not talking to you all. I'm talking to myself, and and right. this is something that uh, it, it starts my day. You know, I really do feel that it starts my day when I hear the words, and 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 share it uh, with other people. But it's really me me talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is so honest. I appreciate that so much. Let me tell you. What, what so you see, what you see is what you get. <laughs> uh, there's a, a question that I always ask every guest at the end, and it is, what is the one leadership tip or lesson that you would like to give to the women who are joining us today? Just one. <laughs> you well, can give more than one. You're well, totally able to do that. You know, and, and I think it goes back to just the difficulty that women have. I think it's asking for help. It really is asking for support and asking for help because we're not going to get anywhere by ourselves. And I think when great leaders understand that and they surround themselves with people, you know, I, I have a great team of people, people that I that I work with, not work. They don't work for me. We work together. But I surround myself with people that are much better at doing things, certain things than I do, or things that I really don't want to do. So I think women, we, the more talented we become in surrounding ourselves with the people that can really help us in different areas of our life, but then we can turn around and help them as well. So it really is, you know, Women Can Act for Good is about support. It's, it will never change. 
it's always been about the mission is supporting other women. That's it. So it really all goes back to the original conversation and the and the reason I profiled you in intentioning, which is believe in the infinite pie, uh, help other people when yeah. you can, uh, yeah. and 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 you know we, you're so right. None of us gets where we are on our own. We no. all. We're, yeah. we're all helped by people, sometimes people we don't even know along yeah. the way. And, it's and, just, yeah. And I, and I always say, be yourself because everybody else is taken. <laughs> so, so very, very. Yeah, and it yeah, also, yeah, like, yeah, when you're, 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 you're when you're you be yourself, person. you don't have to remember who you tried to be. You, 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 <laughs> you are, you don't have to remember stuff, you know, like that's oh. why I always say, I always say, I have, yeah, I just use my name on social media, Gloria Fell, because if I tried to give myself a cute and clever handle, I would never remember what it is. <laughs> and so that's just the way that's that's the way I have to operate. So I I, I just I can't thank you enough, Nancy, for for joining us today. I, I know you're out and about and at a horse show and busy and, and doing all kinds of things. I, I can't too much encourage people to please follow Nancy on social media. There's something a, a morsel of wisdom for you every single day. Yeah. And also so be sure that you tap into the lift women up tips for that you can get from Dr. Nancy yeah. O'Reilly's website, Dr. Nancy well, O'Reilly. My final, my final piece here though, is I am at a horse show. Uh, horses have saved my life. And so all in all, you find something that really brings you joy and great happiness. And the mm -hmm. horses have done that for me. So come out to Southern California, <laughs> head a horse and, Feed them some carrots. That's oh, that is fantastic. That's I, I I want to. Uh, is is there anything else that you want to tell people about finding you and things that you might want well, them to know about? Know, we we have the we've got two audio books now. We've got audio books which we're very excited about. Uh, the podcasts uh, are are available. All of this is on the website and okay. really, uh, you know, having conversations with some of the. The brightest, the smartest, the most interesting people has been a lot of fun, and I'm going to continue to to do more and more of that. But uh, again, I'm I'm all about women and and men, and we we have to work together. It's all about mm -hmm. us. We if we all come together, anything is possible. And we do yeah. have to Roe versus Wade. My gosh, we need to get out there, and we, we can't let this happen. We cannot go back to the dark ages. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going back to the dark ages. Well, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to have a lesson, I think, in civic engagement. So perhaps that's the next thing we can talk about as as far as a project that we should be working on together. Yeah. We really need to. Absolutely. We really need because I think many people don't even know how they can be effective in in the public sphere. And of course, uh, that is that is. Uh, definitely what what we need to know and we need to activate on. I, I, I thank you so much. I encourage everyone to uh, come to taketheleadwomen.com to our website. I will also point out that in the category of self-care, of taking care of yourself first, a couple of weeks ago, we did a program called Take Time For You. And it was so popular and so many people loved it. It's free and we decided we would leave it up free. We can't leave it forever because we have some proprietary materials that some of the presenters provided to us very generously. But if you can go to taketheleadwomen.com forward slash events, you can find it and you can still get that event for free. And we have uh, breathing exercises that Nancy mentioned that we should be doing. There is information about women's heart health. There's some really fun dancing. Uh, there's an exercise program. And there's also a lesson that I did on how to tell your own story and how to be authentic in telling your story. So there's a lot of good stuff on it. Please feel free to take advantage of that while we can make it available to you through May 8th. So Look it up, find it, and, and you'll find it at taketheleadwomen.com. And be sure to follow us on social media at Take Lead Women on Instagram and Twitter and at Take the Lead Women on Facebook and LinkedIn. And I'm, as you just heard, at Gloria Felt everywhere. And <laughs> I wanted I want to just thank everybody who's participated in these intentioning this lives over the last couple of months. It has been so much fun. I'm going to be taking a break. I have some travel coming up. So I'm going to take a break and I will be back in June with some more 
fabulous guests like Dr. Nancy O'Reilly. Nancy, thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, you have a wonderful uh, trip wherever you're going and enjoy it. And thank you so much, Gloria, for what you're doing in the world to make it a better place. And we'll continue to work together to do just that because we're all in this together. This together. Yes. Great way to sign off. Thank, Thank you. you, Nancy. Thank Take you. care, everybody. Okay. We'll see you in June. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.